Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Prog Nerd Reviews. This is episode number 11. I'm very sorry that this was not put out yesterday because usually it's a Wednesday thing. But yesterday I just wasn't really feeling up to filming and I don't want to put out things that, you know, have little to no effort or I feel like I'm forcing myself. Which is what I don't want to happen with this YouTube channel because it's something that's, you know, a bit of fun to just talk about music and interact with other people who like music. So... That's why this video wasn't A, filmed yesterday, and B, uploaded yesterday. Um, I had the review written out yesterday, I just, just couldn't. I just woke up on the wrong side of bed, I guess. Um, but all that aside, today I'm bringing you a great review of one of my favourite albums of the 70s, and one of my first introductions to progressive rock, and more specifically, longer music. So, as you can tell by the title, this is my review on Tubular Bells by Mike Oldfield. This album was released in 1973, and it was his debut as well. I believe he was very young when this was released, and also while it was being recorded, which is very inspiring for me, I guess you could say, because probably around the same age as me currently. I mean, I'm 19 as of now, so he was probably around that age when Tubular Bells was being recorded and released. Um... So let's just jump into the review. Do I own it on vinyl? Of course I own it. Of course, of course I own this album on vinyl. I, no com uh, no collection is complete without a copy of Tubular Bells. I guarantee all of you have got a copy of this album somewhere in your house or wherever you live. Not only do I have a copy of the album, this particular copy is just Tubular Bells Part 1 and 2. It's none of the extra stuff. So I actually also have a copy of Michael Field's single on 7-inch single here. Um... Because that was one of my favourite bits from the... When I heard it for the first time, which was on Spotify. So I got the single as well. I loved the single. But I'm only going to be talking today about the actual album itself. Just the part one and two tracks. Because that's kind of the main body of the album. So as you know, this album is just one long piece of music. Just split into two sections. So you have Tubular Bells part one and part two. Part one is the one that's really well known amongst everyone. I mean, it's got the intro to uh the introduction to the track is the um theme song of the exorcist so I, a lot of you people who like horror movies will probably know i mean i had a period of time where i watched a lot of horror movies and you know i actually um saw the exorcist quite late so i've, I've seen it and that's where i know the um the music from but i didn't know the music that was in the ex i mean i knew of tubular bells i'd listened to the album before watching the film um, so I was familiar with the music, so that's where everyone knows it from. Or if you're just really big into music, then you just know it anyway. So let's so let's get into it. Yeah, let's not waste any more time. I've got so much written down here. Um, so part one is obviously the part that everyone's familiar with. It's the iconic phrase of notes that everyone knows. Um, and it's definitely the most well-known, not only the most well-known track, but also the most well-known part of the track is just the introduction itself. I mean, I learned it on piano and it's quite fun to play. Um, I really like the entrance of the, cause the piano was, <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay. So the entrance of the harmonies with the piano. So of course you've got the iconic line, but then you've also got another, um, track of piano which is harmonizing with it and along with the introduction of the bass which is so great I really love that um, maybe I'll learn it maybe I won't most likely we'll try and learn it at some point um, all of the piano overdubs fit really really nicely together and you can hear every single part it's like eating a good bit of food you know if you can taste all of it then it's very good and if you can hear all of it you know you've done well in the production side of the album um, and it all fits nicely, as I said, not too m not too much is going on, but there is enough that's going on. So you've not got, you're not bombarded with tons and tons of different tracks of whatever, but you're, it's just about enough to keep you interested. Because you don't want that when you're recording, you know, and you've got all these tracks and you want to put them all in one, but you don't want it to be one big musical mess. So this sounds very, very good and works very, very well. Um, the... That is the intro section and it's just so so well put together just overall the album is just very well put together um the next section is the 
uh, the guitar, the dual guitar section, which I really, really like, and you know, gives me chills every single time when that guitar bit comes in, and um, it works well with the bass line and everything that's already going on with the piano and also the. Um, can you think? I think it's a Glockenspiel, but I can't be sure. I know that comes later on in the track, but I don't know if that's used at the beginning. Um, and it is a lovely build up into the next section of the track and the acoustic guitar throughout this track was played so so well and it just sounds really nice with the piano which I like how that that uh, you have that main section the main piano line but there was also like ver variations of that one particular line which worked really nicely and kept kept me interested and intrigued um the use of panning as well i i like when things can bounce back and forth and that keeps it interesting as well um the change so the six i think it's around like the beginning of the six minute section the change in tone is sounds very very nice there's like a very small delay in that kind of guitar solo wee bit it kind of it's just like a very 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 small delay but i picked up on it almost instantly um it's just really, really good. I, I liked that I could pick up on that. And the probably my favourite section of the entire album is the around the seven minute mark of this part one track. The bass and the organ, the really kind of low frequency booming sound of those two put together is so amazing, it's so great. And just, I love the the effects used on the bass um, in particular because obviously there was something used to make it sound even more evil than it already did. Um, lots of mood changes throughout this piece that I've noticed, you know, each section is very well put together and can slide into each other very easily but the way that it's actually been pieced together works really really well and there's another build up section which leads into another repetition of what's already been done the uh, do, 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 do that bit that comes in twice um and the use of dynamics as well the piece will get quiet and then it will go back up again the use of the bells and the organ working together so nice um the variety of instruments used throughout this album keeps you entertained and all played by pretty much all played by uh, Mike Oldfield himself um I like the volume being louder on the bass because of course I like being able to hear the bass more um uh, before I got into this kind of music I'd listen to stuff where the bass wasn't really as in your face um I want it in my face I like being able to hear that instrument because it is my instrument of choice um dual guitars being you know very well done you know i like a good bit of dual guitar i mean i'm an iron maiden fan of course i'm a fan of the dual guitars um variety in guitar tones there was some clean and some a bit more oh what's the word i want to say crunchy but that's not really the word i'm looking for um more gain i guess i don't know how to describe it like i used to play guitar and i can't even think of it you have you know clean i guess dirty is another i don't know uh but you know what i mean i i guess um it's so well done um change in you know the dynamics with the build-ups they go up and down up and down um the bells will get quieter and then the acute then the bell gets quieter and the acoustic guitar comes in and so amazingly played and it's just there was one part where that was just acoustic in one ear and piano in the other and the the lead the like um the build up to the final section of this particular half of the album is so so good. I like how it starts with the bass and then it goes in with the guitar and then all the other instruments following with the with the, with the guy speaking over um and just so well done well put together and as soon as the tubular bells come in it just all crashes and everything is just there it's like a musical painting you can just pick out so much from it and it's so beautifully put together and along with the choir section that comes in towards the end and then the outro of the acoustic bit so so well done and one of my favorite tracks of all time actually tubular bells part one um it's my favorite half of the album because i've heard it the most times and 
it just gets me every single time. And part two is one that I'm not as familiar with because I used to just listen to part one over and over and over again. Um, but I hopefully will be able to get into that now. So moving into Tubular Bells part two. Um, introduction is absolutely beautiful. You know, with the gu guitar layers and effortless playing. I mean, it just makes guitar and bass and all these things seem so easy to play. I mean, I used to play piano, as you guys know, and I've been trying to learn the piano sections on Tubular Bells. It's not not easy um, because I'm only starting to pick up piano again. I mean, I got pretty far in and I'm not bad at it either. It's just, it takes a while for me now. Um, I can learn by ear when it comes to piano. I can't learn by ear when it comes to like bass or guitar or whatever. Um, so the vocal sections are really good as well in this, um, there is no, it was, it's like a choiry kind of section, there's no, like, actual words, it's just singing. Um, it's very atmospheric, smooth key changes, tempo changes, and even dynamic changes, there was times where it was really loud, and sometimes where it was quite quiet, quiet, and it was like, whew, this is very good, I know I'm in for something great. Uh, Beautifully played piano. I'm using the word beautiful a lot because I can't think of anything else. I guess pretty or whatever you want to you want to say. Um, beautiful fade in into the next sections and the shifts between major and minor key is also very much noteworthy. Um, acoustic has played really love. <laughs> acoustic has played really well. Um, and guitar techniques uh, throughout this album is just absolutely amazing. And when the harmonized vocals come in. It's just great. This is just the whole album is, is just great and you know the transitions are so smooth, they're so well done and not at all messy in any sort of way. Um I was like percussive sections as well, which were really good. I like the use of percussive instruments that aren't just your standard drum kit. Um and um there were similar guitar tones from in this one then to part one there was some similarities and the kind of less clean tones of the guitar. Um, there was a lot of key changes everywhere, and I do love key changes a lot, but this was very much, oh, <laughs> so many key changes. Um, and the intensity of the drum build up as well. Just, I like that it got louder, 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 and <coughs> crash into that one like section with the weird vocals and stuff. It's a very weird part of the track, but I, I do love it. It's like, it reminds me of, um, like, Omidorn in a way. I guess there were, like, parts in here that kind of reminded me of what that was going to become. Um, and the, you know, the, the guitar chords, the piano chords, all the chords used were really well done. And the change in atmosphere with the, you know, the solos and the acoustic, solo organ and acoustic, they were just, you know, together like playing together and it was just so good just those two um and you know great guitar playing and the ending of course you know the ending of that with the weird like hornpipe section it's just <laughs> it's really good it always reminds me of when i used to do irish dancing so <laughs> that's uh yeah so that is the end of my review weirdly this one was shorter i guess because there wasn't so many tra tracks to digest um but there are two as i said Tubular Bells part two is the part for me that I'm less familiar with and I didn't have too much to write about it because it was kind of like three big chunks that were like very similar um, throughout and um, not saying that's bad, that's great. Uh, I love this album. My own personal opinion, <laughs> my own personal opinions, um, I love this album. <laughs> it's one of the first kind of instrumental albums that I listened to. Um, I remember the first time I heard it actually um, was I was on a train home from London and um, I just decided to listen to it because I was getting into prog as it was and you know I'd heard about this this album called Tubular Bells because I knew the cover um, but I didn't know the music so I just gave it a listen. I was blown away just from first listen. I remember I came back and I told my dad that I listened to it. Um, I guess you could say he's probably quite happy about that. Um, third overall opinions on this album, probably about a 9 out of 10 for me. Um, because the second part hasn't really grown on me yet, but I'm absolutely in love with this album. And, um, the second part has kind of grown on me, but not in that enough to give it a 10 out of 10. Just a couple of things before I leave you guys. 
I told you all that I play bass guitar. I just keep forgetting to show you, but I actually got a new bass recently. So this is a Squire uh, Precision bass. It's absolutely beautiful guitar. Um, action is so great on it. I'm very much enjoying playing it. And uh, possibility of covers is now um, growing because now I've got this bad boy. I can, I can do anything. Uh, but this is a beautiful guitar. It's a Squire, as I said, precision. And um, maybe I'll get around to playing some stuff. Um, and one more thing. I hate to have to say this. Yes, I am a girl, okay? For the last time. I know these are all like people who troll and stuff like that, but I am a girl. I, am, I was given the name Neve at birth. I have always been called Neve and it's a very beautiful Irish girl's name um, that my parents gave me. Um, I don't really see how I look like a boy. Um, I mean, I've been called a boy before and I, that I just, it's bizarre. It's really bizarre. Um, but I just want to make that clear for um, everyone out there who seems to think that I am a boy. Um, yeah, and I am sorry if this review seems kind of rushed. Um, I felt that it was, but maybe you guys didn't think it was, but I think that I could have done a lot better with it. Um, I've tried filming this so many times and this is the uh, best outcome that I've had so far. So hopefully it's gone well. Um, but yeah. I guess I will see you all tomorrow when I do another Vinyl Community video. And I'm not going to tell you what tomorrow's video is going to be because I'm going to let you guys wait for it. Alright, see you guys tomorrow. Bye.